Hi, this is uh, a video about my explorations into um, flip dot displays. So this is my flip dot display. It's um, specifically a Hanover um, manufactured uh, flip dot display. Um, so flip dot displays. I was looking at making a sort of electromechanical um, display as my next project, and then looking around, thinking about getting some inspiration, came across these flip dot displays. Remembered them in old buses and things like that. Uh, had a bit too much time at the time and looked on eBay and saw one, so just had to get it. Um, they're quite kind of having a bit of resurgence, I think, at the moment, um, especially with the other variant, the sort of fl split flap display, which you also had around the same time um, where you have the two halves um, printed on each other and they kind of flip over um, to display uh, train times, things like that. Um, so my flip dot displays are 57 by uh, 7 uh, matrix and I've written a Node.js driver and also this web GUI which kind of works as an emulator because you've got this display which you can control it with so if I stop that time I can clear it or toggle any dots that I want um, it's quite, it turned out quite handy, I mean I developed this after I've done the, the driver but it's actually quite a handy thing to have to visually be able to change dots um, and also by emulating the serial port you can kind of have an emulated flip dot display which might be quite useful for some people. So yeah and I've also got a bit carried away, some good feature creep uh, well with this web GUI but also uh, the ASCII interpreter um, using Figlet so I can send text uh, or and it's also got uh, scrolling text which is pretty cool um, so that's not a very good font but if I clear that and choose banner these sort of single line fonts are better uh, where you don't have an outline so I wrote this for the up and coming art trail we have in Bristol um, and I've also got a sort of Twitter stream so people can tweet the display and get it to show whatever text they can think of. So here it is with the back off. Um, you can see that you know it's such a big device, even in the 80s when this was made, probably, um, you know, with the bigger package ICs, PCB designers didn't ever have to worry about space constraints because uh, you know they've still got an awful lot to spare there. Um, it's fairly, you know, simple what's going on. Ignore the 24 volt power supply there that I've added in since um, it was designed to work on just a 24 volt line that would be on on a bus, I expect. Uh, so I've stuck one in there. Um, the actual flip dot matrix, the electromechanical part, seems to be a modular component because you can see this ribbon sort of chaining together and you can connect to it. Well, the other end there. Uh, so I've actually, this has actually got two sort of flip dot matrixes inside. Uh, you could make a much longer one. I expect that's how they double the um, number of columns as well. Uh, so there's some little status LEDs, which is quite handy. I've got it running in the clock mode at the moment, so it's updating every second. Um, it sort of demonstrates, I don't know if you can hear it, the solenoids firing. Um, I think that's where my limitation of the 2 hertz refresh rate is coming. You can see that the top LED seems to be when it's firing these solenoids. The middle one's the um, RX, so the receive. And the lower one just flashes every second, as far as I can tell. But yeah, the solenoid one, it, if you fire it every 2, uh, two hertz, uh, it's pretty much constantly on, because um, it doesn't seem to do any sort of fancy frame optimization. Um, at the sort of uh, the hardware end or the, the driving the hardware um, so it will actually raster the whole frame even if you're not changing every, or every dot in the frame um, I don't know if that's just they didn't have the headroom on the microcontroller that big device there it's the micro um, back in the day um, yeah you could do some optimizing there and, and refresh it at a much faster uh, rate. There's a little potentiometer at the end uh, 
that's so you can change the address of the display. Um, it's hexadecimal value, so you can have anything, any 16 different addresses. Because when these were on buses, you'd often have one at the front, one on the side, um, one at the back, driving off one control unit. So they all need to have different addresses. The electronics um, are driving from these li line decoders. Um, it's set up in a, in a matrix grid, as you sort of expect. So it's multiplexing. It has to sort of enable uh, a row and then set each of those um, the, the bits in that column. Uh, so it will sort of fire, I guess, the first row, then scan along that column, um, the first column, then go to the next column, then the, all 57 columns, then go on to the second row. So it has to sort of raster the, the frame data in that way. So here's a close up of the actual flip dot um, electromechanical side of it. I was going to take this plastic off, but it's sort of bonded to the metal frame, so I didn't really want to do that, but you can still see how it's working. Um, so you can see that each sort of disc element uh, has got this half crescent cut out of it, and on the other side, I don't know if you can see in the video, but there's a very uh, faint silhouette of a magnet inset in a similar sort of crescent shape. Um, and that magnet has obviously got north on one side, south on the other, and you can see that when the crescent is, uh, where the crescent is, there's a sort of little post poking through. So there's two posts on each side of each dot, um, and that is a solenoid, so the coils in the middle, which you can't see. Um, and they basically, by alternating the current through that solenoid, change the polarity uh, of the post, which then either attracts or repels um, that magnet, which is inset in the dot. So see this one changing here. So that will just have uh, attracted on that post and then repelled and attracted. So I did a basic sketch uh, showing how that these flip dots work on my display. I mean, they are different. Some of them, the whole disc is magnetic, uh, and it, you know, north and south on either side. But these, so, so far as I can tell, because you've got this half crescent cut out and a magnet inset on the other side, um, it's basically flipping it over by attracting and repelling by reversing the current. So you can set in one direction. So if it's set here. It's attracting the uh, north uh, post on the solenoid to the south of the inset magnet. Uh, but then if you wanted to reset it back to black, you uh, reverse the current and you get south, which would repel the disc and it would attract to this side. So it's quite a neat system. And what's really good about these flip dot displays, um, back in the day when you know, you'd have to use filament bulbs and things like that, um, it doesn't require power, uh, it works, the residual magnetism in that solenoid um, will hold the dot in the place where it was set previously, so you don't have to hold that magnet on, um, I mean it would probably burn out if you did, so I mean that could be another thing limiting the refresh rate is that you don't want to fire the solenoid too frequently, um, but yeah it's, it's basically and also a bus bumping down the road, the, the digits don't uh, unsettle themselves. The magnetism is enough to hold them there. Uh, interestingly, I've tried laying it flat on the bench and it doesn't work very well. Um, so the, the actual solenoid isn't powerful enough. It seems to flip the dot, you know, to, for the dot to overcome its own uh, weight when it's actually laying flat. Uh, it seems to be the problem. I've got the display um, arrived from eBay started looking around at existing sort of drivers for these things. Um, the, the eBay seller had the sort of bus controller, which could send numbers and text presumably, but it was quite expensive and it you know, couldn't do a lot else other than that, other than reverse engineering it to figure it out. Didn't really want that. Um, yeah, luckily someone had made a Python module, um, which is a good starting point, but they haven't spent that much time on it, I don't think. The, it's a sort of implementation of the driver and um, you used glyphs, uh, sort of constant glyph arrays to, for, the, for the fonts, um, which meant that they were, they were designed for a certain size display. 
and they wouldn't scale automatically, um, which wasn't ideal because mine was half the number of rows as the person who wrote that that module. So uh, I decided to write my own, and also because you know it's part of the fun of getting something like this is actually writing a driver, learning about how it works. Um, so yeah, I, I sort of thought about the the glyph system, how can you do it, and decided that ASCII art is the perfect system because you it's sort of auto generating glyphs, um, and there's loads of different uh, ASCII fonts, all, all you know somebody's already created. So I use the Figlet program for for sort of rendering ASCII art, uh, which there's mo node modules for, and um, yes, yeah, so that's one of the features, and you can see I've got lots of font going on here. Um, and that's really handy because you can then scale it, you know, choose the right font for your display, scale it easily if you want. Um, I designed it so that it uses a sort of data matrix, um, X and Y columns, uh, rows, uh, pretty handy for, you know, changing data very easily because uh, as I get into the actual message structure doesn't lend to, you know, a visual understanding of the data going in and out. Uh, yeah, automatic scrolling text. Again, handy for my length display for sending anything other than just words, and the queuing and frame management. So you sort of the kind of uh, different, you know, rather than scrolling, you can show lots of words one after another. And having sort of frame management is and data and data queuing is quite useful for that. Uh, so yeah, it uses a funny messaging system. Um, the kind of the header pretty standard. You send the resolution and address of the display plus a two character at the beginning for some reason that nobody seems to know. I think it's just a, you know, confirming that you're using the right thing. Uh, a checksum at the end in the footer, but the actual message is quite confusing. Um, so if you had, if you're sort of turning one dot on, say the top corner, so it would be one, because you're sending these columns as uh, bytes, so even I've got seven dots, the last uh, bit in the in the byte kind of just isn't shown. You send a full byte, um, then you, yeah, you need zero one in hexadecimal, and you thought you could just send that byte uh, for that one column, but no, you have to send two ASCII characters to represent that byte, so you'd have to send the zero character and the one character. So essentially two bytes for every one byte, which is gonna be shown on the display, so doubling your message, uh, which is, yeah, quite confusing um, when you're trying to develop it and debug it. Um, so yeah, I've got an example here, a bit more comprehensive, if you had 1 1 or 1 0 1 0 1 1 1 F5, you'd have to send the character F and 5, which is 4 6 3 5 in hex. Found that you have to send the full message of, of your resolution, um, otherwise it won't you know acknowledge it and actually display it, which is a problem I encountered that my data was being clipped uh, by the node serial port, and that was only I can only find that out by getting a hardware my Salier logic uh, analyzer uh, into action. Um, yeah, which was really handy because it turned out to actually be a problem with the node serial port module, not my driver, which um, I helped to fix. So yeah, I can demo the message um, structure at hardware level. Uh, so if I step this up to trigger on the um, asynchronous RxD line, uh, so if I set that one in the top corner I was talking about, It'll trigger and then zoom in. You can see that first two character, um, some the actual uh, resolution data or the actual the address of the display. Sorry, um, then the resolution data, which is another complicated thing I won't get into. Then you actually get the column data. So the first column is zero zero. So the ASCII character I've got it showing here. The ASCII character and the hexadecimal uh, byte value. Uh, so zero zero for the first column, but then for the second column zero one. As I was saying, so the one uh, bit on. If I then trigger it again, set this fourth one down, then you get zero nine, which as you'd expect, one plus eight, nine. Um, but then if you send, set this last one on, I did toggled it, but uh, then you get four nine, which yeah, with the most significant bit first, you've got the right hexadecimal value for that was on still so there you go um <clears throat> so yeah this web app came quite handy um i actually only developed it after i fully finished the module the driver but um 
I sort of should have made it earlier on because it's pretty handy for it's a real time display essentially this you can toggle bits as and when you want um, and they're actually being shown based on the serial data unloading so you know that that is real time essentially I mean it's not sending back anything to confirm it but it's as real time as it can be it's not just toggling it when I click it um, which is quite handy for keeping in sync uh, you can clear the display lots of nice JavaScript flashy animations uh, but the main thing is, is this yeah, again this ASCII art um, font renderer is quite interesting um, so I've met, I've sort of loaded all the uh, different fonts that you can get in ASCII uh, from the Figlet. Uh, Doom, although the coolest, doesn't really work because it's an outline font, so you can kind of see it's reading it wrong there. Well, not reading it wrong, but it just doesn't display very well. Um, the best ones are the ones which is just a single <coughs> line. Can I send that? Turn it, yeah. Thanks for watching. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. My kind of adventures with the flip-flop display I had quite a lot of fun um, designing the software and yeah just seeing how it works and also I quite like the clicking noise going to have it at the uh, Toss Down Art Trail showing sort of tweets and things like that if you're around in Bristol uh, yeah and I shared all the, um, the driver module and also the um, web controller uh, on GitHub as well so I can have the links below should work with um, any size display so it's a scalable based on the number of columns and rows that you input. Okay, thank you.